All right, good day, good morning, good evening, good night to you wherever and whenever you're watching me. This is your brother and friend Maurice. And what are we talking about? Well, we are continuing our study into Genesis 1. And our topic is Let the Light Appear. And you're watching the New Cosmos video cast. This is the New Cosmos video cast. You've never heard it like this anywhere. And welcome. So we are continuing our studies into the new cosmos, the new creature, the new heavens and earth. And we are looking at the Genesis creation narrative, the six day creation narrative. We'll be looking at that in this, uh, beginning to look at that in from this video. And uh, this is the sixth video in this series. So to see the previous five, I will put the link to the playlist on the top right hand corner of the video or you may visit the new cosmos video cast channel and look in the new cosmos playlist by way of review last week last study we saw that uh, genesis 1 verse 2 uh, indicated the condition of the erets or the land indicating using the hebrew words tuhu wa buhu uh, which is translated in your Bible as formless and void, according to how that phrase was used by another inspired prophet, Jeremiah this time, he used that in the context of the earth being a wasteland at the time when uh, the Babylonian army passed through, overrun uh, the city of Jerusalem and destroyed its temple, burned down, uh, the city okay so it was a it was a wasteland that's and he applied to who there and also he commented that uh, the heavens were did not give any light and we know that that did not mean that the Sun was not there <laughs> okay but probably because of the uh, the smoke and all, all of these uh, burning buildings, the smoke from all of these burning buildings obscured the sun, so the heaven did not give any light. But then we also began to apply the principle of fusing the natural with the spiritual, so that yes, uh, Jerusalem became Tuhuwabuhu, a wasteland. The heavens did not give any light because of the, the, the smoke of, from the fires. That's the natural but that the natural now was speaking about the spiritual as well right so to who also uh was would represent the condition of the spiritual condition of the children of israel the people of israel right that they were without uh they were they were spiritually uh, desolate right and they had no light because uh, their temple had gone, which was the source of, of light, of knowledge of God, right? So this is the way we are approaching uh, Genesis 1 as well. Okay, so we're gonna, we are looking at Tuhuwabohu in Genesis, looking at how God began to, uh, was beginning to prepare that Eretz, that land which became known as Eden, right? And it was a wasteland. And we asked the question, was it uh, to Huwabuhu desolate because there was no uh, people, because there was no creature, because there was no vegetation? Or was it desolate because there was no, the, the, the presence of God was not there, the priest of God were not there, the temple of God was not there, right? Was it dark because the light was being obscured? by whatever atmospheric conditions or was it dark because there was no spiritual light the knowledge of god the worship of the true of living god was absent all right so with that being said if you want to find out more detail about that you can watch the previous videos so we need to move quickly into what we're going to talk about a, uh, our title is Let the Light 
appear, right? Let the light appear. Now, traditionally, uh, the six days of Genesis 1 and the seventh day of Genesis 2 is called the creation week, right? The creation week. But as we have discovered and will continue to discover, <laughs> The, 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 the concept, the modern concept of creation is the ex nihilo uh, concept, which is to bring stuff into existence from nothing. Good? But as we saw from Genesis, 1, uh, Genesis chap chapter 1, verse 1, there was already, the earth was already there, water was already there, and other stuff was already there. So God could not have been creating in the six days because stuff was already there. We, we looked at uh, several translations. Um, we looked at the Young's Literal Translation. The, Young, the Young's Literal Translation used, uh, said it, that God was preparing the heavens and earth. Okay, and that was more in line with what the context is because if you have stuff already there there's no need to create anything it's already created so what what needs to be done is to prepare or to transform that which was already there and all those words are when we went to the lexicon we said um the, the word uh uh bara you could you we saw that those were all forms of bara bara could mean transform it could mean prepare it could mean uh, to, 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 to fashion and to form. All of those uh, words imply that you are working with stuff that's already there, okay? So that, so we have, we have already established that. So therefore, in my view, the idea of a creation week of Genesis chapter 1 is not... Uh, accurate it is better to say the preparation week okay because God was preparing God was transforming God was forming God was fashioning stuff that was already there and he was preparing that stuff for covenant function all right he was preparing that, that stuff for covenant function right so we are going to as i said look at begin looking at because we're not going to get through all uh we're probably going to just look at day one <clears throat> in this study in this video and we'll go through the rest the remaining days in subsequent studies and videos right so as i said we are going to begin looking at the days of preparation or transformation of the Eretz, the land and of the Shamim or the skies according to the Genesis 1 narrative, okay? So let's get to our Bible and we are in Genesis 1. We are reading, we are going to be using or beginning with the English Standard Version but we are not going to limit ourselves. Wherever it is necessary, I will <coughs> go to another translation. And also, we, we will be using heavily the interlinear where we're going to be looking at the Hebrew words. We're going to be looking at the verb forms. We're going to be looking at the morphologies, etc. Right? We're going to look at, be looking at, the, at, at how these, these words have been used it, throughout the scriptures by the Hebrew writers. So we can have a more comprehensive understanding of what the scripture, what the author was communicating to us. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and we establish here this word created bara, could be saying prepared. Why? Because in the beginning, the heavens and the earth were there, and the earth was without form. Uh, in the Young's Literal Translation, uh, it says the earth became, uh, without form, and we look at this word, we look at these words, form and void, to huwabuhu in our previous study, we saw that more, more accurately, it should be a desolate wilderness, or a vacant, became vacant and a wasteland, something along that line. 
Darkness was over the face of the deep, the deep here being the, 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 uh, the referring to the water that was covering the land. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. So all of this was in place before, <laughs> before verse 3. After all of after this setting has been made by the author, he then indicates that God said, let there be light. Okay, so all of this was in place already. So there's no creation happening here. Okay, this is a preparation of the natural creation. Okay, and it's a, it's a preparation of a specific region or land which God later um, uh, uh, named Eden. And so I'm just bridging from the previous studies for those who are, if you if if you are viewing this video, isolated from the previous five videos, right? So we also said that. Uh, we also took note that the spirit of God was involved here, right? The spirit of God was involved, which means. Gen the Genesis narrative is a fusion of, nat of the natural and the spiritual, okay? So the Genesis narrative pr primarily is a spiritual narrative, right? Yes, it is presenting the natural, right? It is presenting the natural, but it is primarily a spiritual. And that, and that's, that should not be strange, if you are a student of the scripture, because we understand that God communicates spiritual things through the natural. Okay, God communicates the spiritual things through the natural. Even in, in, in the book of Romans chapter 1, it says that the invisible things of, of God can be clearly seen through that which he created. <laughs> okay, so the spiritual things uh, it, 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 it are to be understood through the visible and the natural. Good? So we, so we are using that, um, we are taking note here that the Spirit of God was involved. So this is an inspired text. And so what, is, what, should, what we should be seeking in this narrative is not so much this, the, 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 the natural and the physical, but the spiritual and the covenantal, right? <clears throat> so now, so as before, before we get into verse 3, which is the beginning of the first day, day one of this six days of activity that God undertook to prepare this region, <clears throat> I want to make clear my twofold contention, okay? I'm going to be making a twofold contention. Number one, in the, in, this, in the six days of Genesis 1, no material thing was produced. Okay? In the six days of Genesis 1, no material thing was produced. No material thing was constructed, no material thing was built, no material thing was fabricated, no material thing was put together, no material thing was assembled. <laughs> okay, that's my first contention, right? Now, I'm not saying that uh, and just leaving it there. We will go through the six days, right? But I'm saying before, I'm just giving you a heads up of this is what, my, what, my, uh, what I've come to realize and understand from studying this past, this um, chapter. The second contention is, in the six days of Genesis 1, there was no ex nihilo production of stuff, okay? So in theology, ex nihilo refers to the belief that God created the universe from nothing, okay? Now, I'm not saying that God did not create the universe from nothing. I'm just saying that Genesis 1 and the six days of Genesis 1 is not about an ex nihilo creation. That's what I'm saying, right? So, don't, so I'm saying this clearly because I know <laughs> people are going off into all kinds of 
assumptions right about now. Okay? So let me be clear. Right? I'm saying in the six days of Genesis 1, there is no ex nihilo creation happening. Okay? There is no, there is not, there is, stuff is not being produced out of nothing. Everything that appears in the six days is as a result of stuff that's already there. Okay? Everything that appears in the six days of Genesis 1 is as a result of stuff that is already there already in existence so it's not an ex nihilo creation record in genesis 1 in the six days of genesis 1 all right so <laughs> now let's get into day one so genesis 1 verse 3 genesis 1 verse 3 and god said let there be light and there was light all right genesis 1 God said, let there be light. Let's look at this verse in our interlinear. Here we have uh, verse 3. And said God, or Elohim, and the verb here, so we have to understand that for for English purposes, the translators uh, add words. Okay, they, they 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 add words to make the phrase or the sentence or the thought more readable. Okay, so the let there let there is not really in the Hebrew. There is just the verb yehi. Okay. There's just the verb yehi, and and the the verb yehi, primarily it it has the sense of to become. Okay, it has the sense of to become. If you just to show you that, let's look at the the lexicon. You see, it says to be, to become, to come to pass, to exist, and to happen, to fall out. Okay. These are the basic meanings of the word of the verb yehi. But when we when we look at yehi as in used in uh, Genesis one three here, where God where where it is translated as let there be, the yehi is in the imperfect, right? If you notice right here, it says verb and then it gives the qual, and then it's imperfect, right? So an imperfect verb or in the imperfect conjugation of a verb uh, denotes an action that is incomplete, okay? In other words, it's, it is speaking of an action that begins and at the time of the recording of that action, it was not yet complete. So, for example, let's look at the verb stop, okay? So, so an imperfect conjugation of the verb stop would be was stopping. So the bus was stopping. So at the time I see the bus, it was in the process of stopping. It had begun stopping, meaning slowing down, but it had not yet stopped at the time that I wrote that, observed that action, right? Now the perfect, if the verb is it, if the verb is perfect, it would be a complete action. So in other words, the perfect conjugation of stop would be stopped. So the bus stopped. So at the time I'm seeing the bus, it stopped. It ceased to move. <laughs> okay? So it's a completed action. But the imperfect is that action has begun but has not yet completed. So when we take the imperfect now and we apply it to yehi, okay, <clears throat> and yehi as in, as, as in the context of the light, um, here we have the verb yehi, 
which is, as we said, to become, okay? And we have a, which is the light, and yehi here is in the imperfect, so it's becoming. So the light is becoming, okay? God said the light is becoming. So when you have light that is becoming, it's, it's appearing, it is dawning, <laughs> okay? And in the context, as, as I, went, as I w went on to say, right, that I am asking us to consider the Genesis narrative in, 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 the, in the context of an observer who is observing what is happening and in the context of what the Hebrew uh, uh, writer in this case, it is said to be Moses, right? But he's, he's, Moses was not there. <laughs> when this was happening right he is writing this on the inspiration so but he's uh, he's writing from the perspective of an observer of this preparation so you have this desolate land which is dark but we know it is not dark because of the absence of the sun because of verse 5 right verse 5 if we go to um Verse 5 here, it says, reading from verse 3, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, so we have daylight, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and we know that this word is Ereb, which is sunset, there was the setting of the sun, and there was morning, which is Boker, which is the rising of the sun, the first day, in the Hebrew it says day one. <coughs> So it's telling you clearly that there was sunrise, there was sunset, there was daylight. <laughs> and we get daylight from sunlight. So clearly, the sun was there at the first day of this preparation, right? Which means that the sun, along with the earth, with the water, was already there. However, whatever atmospheric conditions heavy cloud, cloud cover, whatever, was obscuring the sun. That's why the land was dark, right? No, notice I'm not stepping out of what the information is, pre, pre, has presented. I'm working with the information that the author has given, <laughs> right? I'm working with the information that the author has given. I'm not stepping out of the meaning of the verbs. I'm using the meanings that the verbs themselves give. Right? My best submission or understanding of the evidence provided is that God said, let the light appear, and the light appeared. Now, this could mean now that the, 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 the cloud cover that was there would begin to dissipate so that the, the light from the sun could be seen could shine through. I don't know if you ever saw these, uh, whether in a video, whether in a photo, or whether in actuality, where after a heavy thunderstorm, right? And because I live in the, in the Caribbean islands, in the Caribbean, you know, the sea is, is always within a visible distance, right? From where I live or where I work, we all, this, this, the ocean is right there. So that... <clears throat> So that after you have one of these thunderstorms and you would see like the sun rays start to push through the clouds and it looks so like some kind of uh, heavenly rays kind of look, right? Uh, in my mind, that's what I'm seeing. You know, that the, when God said, let the light appear, it's, that's like these rays of light start to shoot through the cloud cover, right? But the sun was already, it all, was always there. Okay, it was always there, but just over this land, which God was about to prepare, and the skies which he was about to prepare over that land, this was what Genesis 1, the six days, was recording that preparation, right? <clears throat> so that based on what we looked at, looked at before, uh, we learned that we are incorporating that with what we are reading now, okay? So then, we have the natural 
uh, we have the natural activity. But then remember now we said um, that we need to now uh, understand, uh, take into consideration that the, f the natural was being fused with the spiritual, right? The natural was being fused with the spiritual so that, uh, yes, we had the sunlight there. And another, another point I need to make with the sunlight is that consider if there was no sunlight, <laughs> right? If there was no sunlight, all the water on the earth would freeze, right? It is the, it is the sun that keeps the earth warm at its, at its uh, what you might say, the normal temperature, <laughs> room temperature. That is, as it, that is as a result of the sun. So if there was no sun, everything would freeze, right? So just take, just take these things into consideration, okay? Because notice, I don't think I, I spend enough time actually. So let me go back to the Bible here in verse deal it, 3 and 4. God said, let there be light. There was light. So God said, let the light appear. The light appeared. Good. And God called the, the light what? Day. So we have daylight. <laughs> okay. We have daylight. Let me ask the question. Is daylight material no daylight is not material light in and of itself is not material light is electromagnetic radiation <laughs> okay so was anything material created on this day one no light is not material and Let's move on. And the darkness he called night. There was evening. Okay, so there was sunset. And there was sunrise the first day. Was any of that material? <laughs> was, that, was that a material thing that God created? No. God just defined what a day is. <laughs> right? God defines says, look, the, the light portion of this period, this, the, the period which the sun is, is visible, that's, that's daylight. That's the day. And the period where the sun is not visible, that's going to be called night. <laughs> All right? And there was sunset and there was sunrise. Now, we take it for granted Right? We take it for granted that the definition of day and night and also uh, the, the, the grouping of days into seven, into periods of seven to form a week, we take it for granted that that was always there. <laughs> but at some point, somebody had to say, well, this is day, this is night, and seven, seven, peri seven uh, periods of day and night would make a week. Somebody had to say that. But understand now, the day, the night, and the seven days were now all in a covenant context. Right? The day and the night and the, the seven days were in a covenant context. Right? Because... God was making this known to his covenant people. Right? God was making them making it known to them. We, we assume that people always knew this. <laughs> no, at some point, this knowledge had to have been revealed. Okay? So we have God revealing these delineations and definitions of the already functioning natural creation. So it's not that God was making a day when there was never a, never, never a, 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 a daylight before. No, he was just saying this light part of, the, of, of this 24-hour period 
it shall be called day. <laughs> and the dark part shall be called night. But it was already there. Okay? It was already there. And then you would have a period of seven days. And that we'll call a week. <laughs> okay? All right? But as I said now, that was giving the day, the night, and the week <coughs> covenantal purpose. Because we know that now, when you, when you come down all the way down to like in Exodus now, let's look at Exodus 12 now. We'll show, I'm going to show you now, this is not new. This is not something new with God. Exodus 12, verse 1 and 2. Okay? Look what it says there. And the Lord said to Moses, so now we, we are now in the context of Israel. So this is like how much? Uh, probably a thousand some years later. Okay? Don't quote me on that. <laughs> right? Many hundreds of years later in Egypt now. The Lord, here's, here's the Lord with Moses, Aaron, and the people of Israel in Egypt, right? Now watch this. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Now let me ask this question. <laughs> when God said to Moses and, and Aaron and Israel that, this month, whatever month that was, <laughs> shall be for you, meaning Israel, the beginning of months. Was there never months before? Was God creating months, um, uh, 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 um, the, the, the concept of months? No, there were months, you know, there were the Egyptian calendars, there were the ancient calendars, Right? How they reckon days, how they reckon months, and how they group their, their days into whatever weeks or whatever. However they calculated time. But God said to Israel, when he was at the point where he was forming Israel as his covenant people, creating them as a nation, as a people of him, of, of his, right? He said to them, look. This is the first, <laughs> this is day one for you. Just like with, with um, in, 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 Gen in Genesis 1, okay? When God said, and the, and the evening and the morning were day one. Because in the Hebrew, it's literally day one. Okay? Let me just show you that, by the way. Let me just show you that, right? So here we are. Uh, so God, right, called God the light day and the darkness he called night and there was evening. Okay, there's the word Arab, Arab, which is sunset. And wa, there was Yehi, there became morning, Boker, that is sunrise. Day, look, at, no, look here now, day one. Okay, see here in the red, day one. Good. So, here in, 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 in the Genesis narrative, there was a day one. <laughs> but that day one did not mean there was no days before. It didn't mean that. It just means this is, this is day one for the covenant people of God. Similarly, in, 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 in Exodus here, with when God speaking to the children of Israel, right, which was his, which was which he which he was preparing them to be his creation, according to Isaiah, I think it's 43 or 42. Right? And I'll bring that text up again later. But it just came, popped into my head here now. But I'm going to do an extent, a, a more extensive uh, study. Use, uh, so I'll bring back Isaiah where God said to Jacob, I have formed you. <laughs> I have created you, Israel. Right? So God was creating 
and forming Israel. And when he did that, beginning when, from when they were in Egypt to when they were in the wilderness, and when they received the law in the wilderness, all of that was the forming, all of that was the creation of, of Israel. And we know that was not forming them. He was not popping them into existence. They had been around for 400 years. Right? So, the, the, so here we have the biblical understanding of the use of the word the, on the, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the cre of creation is not bringing stuff ex nihilo. <laughs> it's not making stuff out of nothing. It is transformation of stuff. And at Israel's creation, they were given day one. God said to them, this month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year. So it was day one, month one, and year one. Right? God established them on a new reckoning of time for covenant purposes because Israel's Days, months, and years were primarily for them to observe the feast of the Lord, the seasons of the Lord, right? The Moeb of the Lord, <laughs> right? So, so that, that was God now purposing the, the sun and the moon because it was the sun and the moon by which Israel calculated their days and their months. Right? The months were calculated by the moon. The days were calculated by the sun. So that is why in Genesis 1, where God begins by giving them days, um, by implication, once you give them days, you have given them weeks because there's a, there's a seven-day period there, the six days and the day of rest. And by implication, you have given them months and years. <laughs> okay? And when we get into uh, day four, you're going to see God indicate the reason for these days and years would be for observing the, uh, the celebrations, right? The feast days and so on. So that, so you have a covenant purpose for the day in Genesis 1. Right on day on, on day one. <laughs> All right. So so let's go back to Genesis one here. Okay. Yes. So God called the light day and the darkness He called night. So you have daylight, and there was evening. There was sunset, and there was morning. There was sunrise the first day. These things were already there. All God was doing now, He was purposing them for His. For the covenant people that he would place in that land, the Eden land, right? So now, <clears throat> let's look at Exodus 16 again for this principle, right? Exodus 16. Here we have uh, God teaching Israel a seven day week right remember this is at at the at the formation and the creation of israel god taught them god brought to them the the principle of observing days okay so in verse four we have here then the lord said to moses behold i'm about to rain bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. And on the sixth day, right? So we have a period of six days. <laughs> Just like in the, at the creation narrative of Genesis 1, there is a period of six days. On the sixth day, they, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. All right? Let's jump down to verse 22. God is teaching them, is a a, 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 a a period of seven days look at it look at it now and on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread two omers each 
And when all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, this is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day, so this will be the seventh day now. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Right? So, notice now, so God is teaching them days. <laughs> How to observe days of seven. Okay? So, six days you, you work, on the seventh you rest. And that was a pattern now that was commemorating that was a that 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 ceremonial seven days now that seven day ceremonial week was commemorating the genesis week <laughs> all right but it was about the observance of days and so if you're going to be observing days you have to know what a day is right you have to know Okay, the light part is the daylight. And then you have the sunset and you have the sunrise. <laughs> That's day one. That's an ordinal day. So when you start counting days, you have to know how to count your days, right? So all of that was what was, that was how God was, was preparing the already existing creation to be, to serve his covenant people right so the days were to serve the covenant people so that they can have order in their lives okay not just natural order but spiritual order worship order all right <clears throat> so the observance of these weekly sabbath days and these annual sabbath days were to sanctify Israel and to separate them from the other nations, okay? The observance of these days would separate them from the other nations. Now, listen to this. Watch this now. Eh? <laughs> they would separate the observance of the daylight would separate Israel from the other nations like how God separated the light from the darkness, the day from the night. Look at Exodus 31, 13. All right? Look at Exodus 31, 13. So now we are now moving from the natural to the covenantal. <laughs> right? We are moving from the natural to the covenantal. And then from the covenantal, we're going to get into the spiritual, right? But let's look at the covenantal right about now. So Exodus 31, 13. Exodus 31, 13. Let's look at the function of these days. You are to speak to the people of Israel and say, Above all, you shall keep my Sabbaths. Okay, so, he, so we have the weekly Sabbaths. You have the annual Sabbaths. Okay, and so God is now going to say why. They were to observe these weekly Sabbaths and annual Sabbaths. For this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I, the Lord, sanctify. Right? <clears throat> sanctify. What does the word sanctify mean? Right? Sanctify means that he separate for holy use right separate for holy purpose you shall you shall keep the sabbath because it is holy okay now hear the word again holy holy means uh separate set apart for you notice so this was something pe peculiar for israel okay these sabbaths are or were peculiar to his Israel. It was holy for them. Everyone who profanes it shall be put to death. Whoever does any work, that soul shall be cut off from his people. Six days. So notice now, you notice the purpose of the days. <laughs> Six days shall work be done so that they have, an, they have now a, a, a period that, may, that they, may, they may be productive, do work. And then the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall be put to death. 
Therefore, the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a covenant forever. Right? Notice the people of Israel. <laughs> okay? So, so this, was to, this was to define these laws and these days and these, these holy days and these holy months and these holy years were to define the people of Israel forever. Right? Define them. It is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed and he gave to Moses when he had finished speaking on him with him on Mount Sinai the two tablets of testimony etc right let's jump over to the next chapter Exodus 19 so no, sorry not the next chapter but <laughs> Exodus 19 same book Exodus but chapter 19 now verse 5 it says there now therefore speaking again to Israel if you will o indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant Okay, so you have covenants now. You shall be my treasured possession among all people. Okay, so notice God's covenant was to separate, again, Israel from among all the rest nations. Okay, for all the earth is mine. You shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words, etc. Right? So the observance of these days. And the covenant was to separate Israel from the other nations. Like how God separated the day from the night, the light from the dark, etc. Right? So this now brings us now to the spiritual. Okay? So we went to the natural. <laughs> we gone to the covenantal. So when God was... Uh, given the, defi the, the, the definition and the purpose of the day in Genesis 1, 5. He was doing it for a covenantal purpose and also for a spiritual purpose, right? So let's look at the spiritual purpose. Israel's observance of the weekly Sabbath days and the annual Sabbath days were to sanctify or to make them distinct Distinct from the other nations, the observance of these days would naturally separate them from the other nations, like, as I said, the separation of the light from the darkness, the day from the night. So when God said, let the light appear in Genesis 1, 3, there was also a spiritual application of his words, right? First, let me ask the question. In a spiritual context, when God said, let the light appear, Genesis 1, 3. In a spiritual context, let me just go back there. Genesis 1, 3. Okay? When God said, let the light appear, or, or, or as the English Standard Version says here, let there be light. Was this the first instance of light? We established, no, it wasn't the first instance of light. Because um, verse 5 said there was evening, there was morning, there was sunlight. <laughs> okay, and, and the fact that God says God saw the light was good and God separated the light from the darkness and God called the light day. So this is daylight. <laughs> okay, physically there was daylight and, and we established that this was not immaterial thing that God is producing right so daylight was already there but God was now defining it and giving it covenant purpose right but spiritually now we're talking about spiritual light was this the first spiritual light appearing this is was was this the first instance now of spiritual light now, if you're not familiar with what is spiritual light, okay, light in a covenant and spiritual context means revelation of divine knowledge. Revelation of divine knowledge, bringing wisdom, bringing understanding. Okay, so we, we know like, for example, in 1 John 5, 
First John 1 verse 5, let's jump down there. First John 1 verse 5, it says there, This is the message we have heard from him, that is from Jesus, and proclaim to you that God is light. <laughs> okay? God is light and, it, and in him is no darkness at all. So we have God is light. So when God said, let the light appear, He's now introducing himself into that realm, into that, that chaos and that, that, that wilderness and that darkness, spiritual darkness, that spiritual wasteland, that spiritual void. He's now introducing his spirit because it says the spirit of God was hovering on over the face of the water. Right, So the Spirit of God is what brings light <laughs> because God is light. We're not talking now about the, the visible uh, electromagnetic radiation that comes from the sunlight. <laughs> right? We are talking about spiritual light now. Okay? Spiritual light was there. Why? Because the Spirit of God was there. <laughs> okay? So, 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 we have also, um, let's look at Psalm 27, verse 1, right? Psalm 27, verse 1. Okay. Psalm 27, verse 1. Okay, so look at this now. The Lord is my light and my what? Salvation. Okay. The Lord is my light. <laughs> That can be a visible, natural light. This is a spiritual light, a spiritual guiding, spiritual understanding, wisdom that, 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 that leads you to salvation. Okay? That light that leads to salvation. That's the spiritual light. Okay? Let's look at another one. Isaiah 9 verse 2. Isaiah 9 verse 2. Okay, so we are looking now at the spiritual light. Because remember, we established that the Genesis narrative, being inspired by the Spirit of God, must have for its primary function... <laughs> A spiritual message, a spiritual, um, must be understood in, in a spiritual context, primarily. The natural aspect of Genesis, the Genesis 1 narrative, is just to support <laughs> or to present the spiritual meaning. All right? It says there, the people who walked in darkness have seen what a great light do you think this darkness that they were walking in was the absence of daylight or sunlight or natural light no this was spiritual darkness right they were walking in spiritual darkness and what happened they saw what a great light those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness on them has light shone. You think that's talking about the natural light? You think that's talking about sunlight, daylight? No, it's talking about spiritual light. A spiritual light. Okay? So we understand. So, there, so, there, so, there, so, so light from God has shone upon People who walk in darkness so that they no longer will be walking in darkness. They will be walking in the light of God, in the knowledge of God, in the wisdom of God, in the spirit of God. They will be walking in, in God's salvation. Right? So in other words, they have become covenant people of God. Right? So they move from heathen, pagans, or um, apostates into saints of God, right? So since God is light, 
then the light of Genesis 1 verse 3 cannot, in a spiritual sense, cannot be a newly produced light <laughs> because God is eternal. Right? So the natural light of Genesis 1 was not newly produced, right? Because God clearly said it was daylight and that they, the sun was rising and the sun was setting. <laughs> so it was not newly produced. It was always there. But it had been obscured, I am suggesting, by the atmospheric conditions over that particular region of the earth. Okay? Neither was the spiritual light newly produced or newly introduced because if God or since God is light and God is eternal, then the light was already there. It's just being revealed at that time that Genesis uh, 1 was recording. <laughs> right? And if light, as Isaiah 9, 2, and as Psalm uh, 27, verse 1 says, is the knowledge of God, then that knowledge also, that light also is eternal. Even though man comes into that light or that knowledge of God at some specific point in time, that doesn't mean that the, that light never existed before that point. <laughs> That knowledge of God was always there. But it is only at some point in time, and point in your life, my life, or their life, when they began to encounter the Spirit of God. Yeah, that happens at a point in time, but that doesn't mean the Spirit of God was never there. <laughs> and that's the first time that the Spirit of God comes into existence when you detect the Spirit of God, or when you come into contact with God's Spirit and God's knowledge? No. It is always there. Similarly, in Genesis 1, the light from God was always there. <laughs> because God is eternal, is, and the knowledge of Him is also eternal. You know, we are so self-centered. Many of us believe that because we gain understanding of something, today, we tend to believe that no one else has ever seen this. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I just realized something. And because I realized it today, then nobody else has ever re realized that before. I'm the first person. No, <laughs> you're not the first. That has always, people have always in the past come to that understanding. Why? Because it's the Spirit of God that is the agency of re revealing light. Revealing light from God. Okay? God has been doing that since... <laughs> since whenever. Okay? How much each person processes that light that God gives, that's a different story. Okay? But the light is always the same. And it is always there. Okay? So the first light... Or spiritual knowledge, according if we if we are going according to Genesis one now, the first light that came to man was through the hovering of the Spirit of God, and bringing discernment of light and darkness. Right, because remember, if you if we go we are again we are going in the context of Genesis one, the first thing we saw was darkness over that land, and what happens now? In that darkness, light comes. Understanding comes. And once understanding comes, then automatically you're going to be making separation between light and darkness. Right? Discernment of light and darkness. And I'm talking now about spiritual light and spiritual darkness. <laughs> okay? The ancient people associated light with wisdom of the gods. You can read that in Daniel 5 verse 11. L look, at, look at this. Daniel 5 11, right? Look at this. Here's what um, the Babylonians believed, right? There is a man in your kingdom in whom this is the spirit of the holy gods, right? They were actually talking about Daniel. 
right? And this is how they viewed Daniel. That Daniel had the spirit of the holy gods, right? In the days of your father, light, notice, light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of gods were found in him. Right? So you notice, the people of that time understood <laughs> that light represented wisdom from God. Wisdom of the gods. <laughs> That's what they understood. So when you put that back into Genesis 1, ask yourself the question. Since Genesis 1, nothing material was created. <laughs> nothing was being produced ex nihilo. <laughs> right? The light that God... That, that, that God um, said let the light appear it was already there the natural light was already there from the sun <laughs> the sun rising and the sun setting but the spirit of god was in the mix so therefore we have to also understand that that natural light was also depicting spiritual light and god was more interested interested in the spiritual light and that spiritual light would be obviously coming from his presence through his spirit the spirit of god which is hovering above the waters so what is that light of that spirit it is the knowledge of god it is the wisdom of god <laughs> and we see right from god defining and saying well this is the this is like you have god's knowledge being pouring forth now so that ancient man would say okay well this is light this is day and this is night <laughs> Okay, where did he get that knowledge from? It comes from God. <laughs> right? That's, that's, that's part of the wisdom of God, the understanding, because we, we tend to believe that, oh, because something comes from God, it, like it doesn't have no relevance in your, in your secular or normal life. No. The wisdom of God is, is, is that which exactly helps you now to excel in your so-called natural or secular life. Right? Things which people are going wrong in circles with, <laughs> you have the wisdom to go and pass them and do it in less time with less effort when they are wasting their time, their effort, their energy, <laughs> their resources going wrong in circles. But the wisdom of God from the light of God through the spirit of God just shows you, look, man, just go this way. Whoop, and you accomplish what they're fighting up themselves with. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's how the Spirit of God works. Right? Let's look at Psalm 43, verse 3. Psalm 43, verse 3. Hear it, hear, hear, listen to what the psalmist said. Send out your light and your truth. So here's light. Sorry. Send out your light and your truth. Psalm 42, verse for, for, for 43, verse 3. Send out your light and your truth. Notice, light is associated with truth. The psalmist says, let them, let the light and God's truth lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling, to your sanctuary, right? The sanctuary represents what? God being, God dwelling with man. So let God, so, so God's light and truth guides a man into a relationship with God. Okay? So all of these are, 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 are found in the, in the spiritual meaning of light, which I believe was what was, was the primar was primarily what was being depicted. In Genesis 1 verse 3, in day 1, the light of God had come to that region, that, that wilderness region on the earth. <laughs> right? That light had come for covenant humanity to dwell in, to be led by, to be saved by. 
to be transformed by, right? Through the ministry of the Spirit of God. So the minds of ancient humanity were first turned to God through the prompting of the Holy Spirit to ponder the mystery of day and night. <laughs> through the inspiration of God's Spirit, they became associated with right. Day, daylight became associated with godliness, became associated with truth, became associated with knowledge, became associated with the noble qualities and virtues. While night, the darkness, became associated with wrong, with ungodliness, with error, with ignorance, and with the base and the lower appetites of man. Okay? So that indicate that the light, <laughs> yes, you had the natural light from the sun, but more importantly, you had the light from God, the revelation of righteous knowledge. And also another thing about light is that, that those who are living according to the light of God are, are actually called people of light. <laughs> yes, for example, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 4. Yes, look at it, look at it, look at it. But you are not in darkness, right? You are not in darkness, all right? So right away, you're taking your mind back to Genesis 1. <laughs> what was there? Darkness, right? Brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are children of what? Light. Aha, day one. <laughs> God called the light day. Now lo notice, children of the day. <laughs> And the darkness he called night. We are not of the night or of the darkness. Notice that now? So those who are following the light of God, who have received the light of God, who have embraced the light of God, night, they are no longer of the darkness. But those who have, don't have the light, they are of the darkness. They are of the night. <laughs> All right? So you notice there that at that Genesis 1 creation, quote-unquote creation, which I would call, the prep call a preparation, the natural light depict and the separation of the natural light from the, 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 from the darkness, making the day and the night, the daylight and the night, had more covenantal and spiritual applications than we were first led to believe. <laughs> so when God began preparing the Eden land for his covenant people, the first thing he called forth was light. That light began peeking through the dense cloud cover and that light also was the dawning of the knowledge of God upon the ancient people which began having a sanctifying and separating effect on them. All right? <laughs> so, we will continue next week in our study of the new cosmos. Remember the two points that I, I said I would be dealing with in this day one study? That on day one, well, on the six days, but day one, since we have completed day one, let's, let's ask the question. On day one, was anything material produced? Nope. Light is not material. Was anything constructed, built, fabricated, put together or assembled? No. Light was defined as daylight. The darkness was defined as night. The sun rose and the sun set, and that was day one. <laughs> All right? There was no ex nihilo production of stuff because the, the, the light was already there. In, in, in fact, the natural light was already there. The spiritual light was already there. The earth was already there. The water was already there. 
the sun was already there all right so we will continue next week in our study of the new cosmos the new heaven and earth the new creature and we are looking at the genesis creation quote unquote <laughs> so that we can understand the new creation when we come to that topic so if you appreciate this content please like share subscribe you may support the ministry by giving or purchasing one or all of my books or purchasing from the merchandise store the links to these are down below in the description or i may put them in the first comment until next time i'm your friend murray saying may god richly bless you this has been the new cosmos video cast remember to comment like subscribe and share